All right, today guys, we're going to go over the specialized electrical trainer lesson three properties of electricity. Our objective in this section is you will be able to define the properties of electricity, including EMF, potential, which is measured in voltage, current, which is measured in amperes, resistance, measured in ohms, and power, measured in watts. I'm going to be able to explain the difference or differences between AC and DC current. So if you would open up your PDF on your Chromebook and follow along, we're going to begin by doing this experiment 3-1. As you see the schematic there, um, in lesson two, we learned how to read uh, electrical symbols and schematics. And we have, we're going to plug into our 12 volt tap. Then we're going to a fuse, a 10 out fuse, through a switch, and then to a tail out bulb, and then the ground. So I'm going to begin by getting these components out of the board here. So I have, if you look on the schematic, you'll see that, the, that they have labels also that are circled by letters. So we have the component A, component B, which is our tail out bulb and then some conductors so over here's our 12 volt tap i'm going to plug into there to the entrance to our fuse um, if i plug right here i will bypass the switch so i want to use this terminal here And then to our tail out bulb, and then to ground. All right, so when I turn this on and I turn the switch on, we have power through our bulb. To apply power to the circuit by turning on the project board power supply when the light glows you will know current is flowing in the circuit so we're going to take a compass sufficiently held away from the board note which way the needle is pointing and then observe what happens to the compass needle as you turn the switch on and off So when electricity throws or current flows through a conductor, it produces a magnetic field around that conductor. Um, so we have said that a number of electrons gathered in one place constitute an electrical charge. We call this charge an electrical potential or voltage. Voltage is, voltage is measured in volts, capital V, since it is used to move electrons. An externally applied electrical potential is sometimes called an electromotive force, or EMF. A potential, voltage, and EMF all mean the same thing. There is a difference in potential. Voltage comes from, um, is named after Alessandra Volta. Uh, so voltage is often described as an electrical pressure that drives electron flow or current. So this pressure is known as electromotive force or EMF. A battery and generator or automotive devices used to provide the pressure or voltage required to operate electrical components. So electricity we cannot see. Um, we can compare it to water. So think of the voltage in a circuit as the pressure, such as we need pressure to push water. We can see water, 
and when we open the faucet and it sprays out we know that we have pressure Um, this pressure or voltage exists only when there is a higher potential of electrons at one point than at another point. This difference in potential is voltage. Therefore, voltage is pressure available to push electrons from the power supply through the circuit and back to the power supply. There are two types of voltage, direct current, more commonly called DC, and alternating current, more commonly called AC. Direct current DC is best described as a direct or con continuous flow of electrons in one direction. Most automotive systems use DC. The advantage of using DC is it can be stored electrochemically in a battery. So batteries produce direct current. Um, so here it shows you a graph over time, the voltage over time is what you would see on an oscilloscope. So we have time at the bottom, and then it's showing that we have 12 volts DC, and it is in a straight line, so it is direct current. Alternating current, AC is best described as an alternating or back and forth flow of electrons. Automotive generators produce AC potential. AC is easier to produce in a generator due to the laws of magnetism, but it is extremely difficult to store. Generators incorporate special circuits that convert the AC to DC before it is used in a vehicle's electrical system. So down here we have a sine wave of volts over time of an alternating current going from one volt positive to one volt negative. So it's alternating back and forth. Well, actually, 5 volts. I'm sorry. I changed the scale on it. So between 0 and 10, we have 5 volts. So we have 5 volts that are positive, and then it switches to negative, back and forth, alternating, producing a sine wave. The movement of electrons in a circuit is the flow of electricity, and another name for the flow of electricity is current. Current is measured in units known as amperes or amps, capital A. An amp expresses how many electrons are moving through a circuit at a given time. The time interval we use in electronics is the second. The more electrons flowing through a circuit, the higher the amperage. And let me make note, go back on the EMF, that in, some, in scientific notation, voltage is also represented by a capital E for EMF. They may not use the V. So back to current. Current is measured in units known as amperes or amps. An amp expresses how many electrons are moving through a circuit at a given time and the time interval we use in electronics is the second. The more electrons moving through a circuit, the higher the amperage. So in this diagram here, figure three dash five, shows current flow flowing from negative to positive. And using this example too, the electrons actually, if you, as electron enters out of the battery, it actually pushes all these electrons, like a, imagine these are ping pong balls. So as soon as one enters, one exits. So electricity actually flows near the speed of light at 186,000 miles per second. So they actually travel slow, but as soon as that electron pushes in, one pushes out. Now we're going to discuss the conventional current flow and the electron theory. Current flow is usually shown as flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. This current flow is called the conventional theory. So conventional theory um, states that it flows from positive to negative. Another way of describing current flow is called the electron theory, which states that current flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. 
The conventional theory and the electron theory are two different ways of describing the same current flow. Essentially, both theories are correct. The electron theory follows the logic that electrons move from an area of many electrons, a negative charge, to one of few electrons, positive charge. However, in describing the behavior of semiconductors, we often describe current as moving from positive to negative. The important thing to know is which theory is being used by the service literature you happen to be using. Service manual schematics use conventional current flow theory. Um, seems kind of confusing. These are theories that no one perfectly understands electricity. Uh, we've learned how to control things. Um, so the electron theory is the most correct theory because of um, studies done back in the early 1900s by Joseph John Thompson with a cathode ray and he determined that the electron theory is more correct but it's kind of like I have two magnets here and I can't see a magnetic field but I know that if I take one pole of this horseshoe magnet and get close to this one it pushes it away so it's telling me that these charges are similar. If I take the other side of the horseshoe it attracts so these charges are opposites. So remember that opposites attract and similar charges repel. So I can't see that magnetic field but I can see that it exists. So I look at electricity as the same way that the positive and negative charges are attracted to each other. Uh, but the electron theory is supposedly proven to be most correct. Um, in our wire, back to the wiring diagram, you see that our schematic shows that our voltage travels from positive to negative. So most manufacturers use the conventional theory um, for wiring diagrams and also um, from using a multimeter from going um, positive to negative we use a conventional theory. I know it's confusing but just remember that the multimeter is set up or designed to be used for the conventional theory as well as manufacturers wiring diagrams. Just remember that conventional theory is from positive to negative, electron theory is from negative to positive. Our conductors, electrons move along a path called a conductor. They move by traveling from atom to atom. Materials that make it easy for electrons to move through them are called good conductors. So examples of good conductors include aluminum, copper, silver, and gold. A material is a good conductor if it has many free electrons, or electrons that can be easily removed. Other materials make it difficult for electrons to move through them. These are called poor conductors or insulators. A material that is a good insulator keeps its electrons tightly bound in orbit. And examples of insulators include Rubber, wood, most plastics and ceramics, no material is a perfect insulator and some insulators such as wood do conduct some electrical flow when wet. So it depends on how much current would go through um, or would overcome the resistance. Um, and some of your electude exercises um, you learned about valence electrons, electrons in the outer ring that actually travel. Um, a conductor will have one, two, three electrons in its outer orbit. Insulators will have around six to eight. And then there's another group that we'll discuss that are semiconductors that will contain four or five valence electrons in its outer orbit. A wires, a wire in an automotive harness is made up of a conductor and an insulator. 
The metal core of the wire, typically made of copper, is the conductor. The plastic or other material jacket that coats the core is the insulator. Under normal circumstances, electrons move a few inches per second, yet when electrical potential is applied to one end of a wire, the effect is felt almost immediately at the other end of that wire. This is so because the electrons in the conductor affect one another, much like the billiard balls in the lines. As we use the ping pong ball as an example in the other illustration, um, it says that the electron moves a few inches per second, but yet the result is immediate. So when you turn a switch on and your light uh, comes on almost instantaneously, it's because that electron at the switch put, uh, pushes in um, and pushes out at the light instantaneously at the, about the speed of light, close to the speed of light. Um, Resistance is the opposition to the movement of electrons or current flow. So resistance is measured in units called ohms, named after George Simon Ohm. Um, most resistance sources are designed into the circuit and are known as loads, such as light bulbs or motors. As a matter of fact, all electrical devices, including wires, have some resistance. As resistance works, to oppose current flow, it changes electrical energy into some other form of energy such as heat, light, or motion. So every electrical circuit has to have a form of resistance. So in other words, electricity must do work. It must create heat, light, or motion. It must be used to do work or bad things happen. And some resistance factors. The resistance of a conductor is determined by a combination of four factors. The atomic structure, how many free electrons. The more free electrons a material has, the less resistance it offers to current flow. So remember that, a res that an insulator is going to have more free electrons, six to eight and it has less resistance than offers to current flow. So a good conductor will have one to three outer orbit electrons in the Bailiff's ring here. Alright. Also, another factor that affects resistance is the length of the wire. So the longer the conductor, the higher the resistance in the circuit. Also, width affects resistance, the cross-sectional area of the wire. So the larger the cross-sectional area of a conductor, the lower the resistance. Um, and think of it again with the water analogy, a bigger pipe flows more water than a smaller pipe. So a larger wire will have more or less resistance than a smaller wire. So small wires will have a have more resistance than larger wires. All right, this chart here goes over wire gauge sizes. Um, on the left side, we have metric wire sizes, which is in millimeter square. So this is a cross-sectional area of the wires. Um, so they go from just a measurement in millimeters um, square. And then on the other side, we have the AWG sizes, or the American wire gauge sizes. Um, and notice over here that we have a 16 AWG, which is a tiny wire compared to a 10 AWG, which is larger. So the higher the number in the American wire gauge um, system, the smaller the wire. So 24 would be very tiny and 2 very large. Another factor that affects resistance is temperature. For most materials, the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance. There are a few material 
materials whose resistance goes down as temperature goes up. This section talks about wanted or unwanted resistance. Resistance is useful in electrical circuits. It must remember electricity must do work. We must use it to produce heat, make light, limit current, and regulate voltage. However, resistance in the wrong place can cause circuit trouble. Unwanted resistance can cause component failure, diminish component operation, etc. Predicting resistance, sometimes you can predict that high unwanted resistance is present by just looking at an electrical connection. Expect resistance to be high if the material is discolored, wires are loose, the connection is corroded, and typically it will be on the automobile will be a um, greenish color from the acid from the battery, or rust can cause a poor connection or corroded connection, and then wires that are too small. Corrosion resistance can also be affected by the physical condition of a conductor. For example, battery terminals are made of lead, ordinarily an excellent conductor. However, when a battery terminal is covered with corrosion, resistance is substantially increased. So this makes the terminal a less effective conductor. So you have a lot of battery acid corroding the terminal. It causes a high resistance and you lose a good connection or lose good current flow from the battery. Um, the basic unit of resistance measurement is the ohm. The symbol for ohms is the Greek letter omega, which looks like a, that image there does not look correct. It should be a, like an upside down horseshoe. If the resistance of a material is high, close to infinite ohms, it is an insulator. If the resistance of a material is low, close to zero ohms, it is a conductor. So remember that resistance is the opposition to current flow. The higher the resistance, the less current flow. Um, and it talks about resistors here. Um, their electronic components are rated by how many ohms of resistance they create and by how many watts they can handle. Common ratings for carbon composition resistors are one quarter watt, one half watt, one watt, two watts. A resistor converts electrical energy to heat. As the resistor works, it always generates some heat. If a resistor is forced to handle more watts than it was designed for, it will generate excessive heat and would when substantially overloaded, it may fail prematurely. All right. And power, the final property of electricity is power. Power is the rate at which work is being done in a circuit. The output of automotive engines is usually expressed in horsepower, as in the output of electric motors. Many electrical devices are rated by how much electrical power they consume, rather than by how much power they produce. Power consumption is expressed in watts. So this is named after James Watts. And I think I failed to mention that current is named after Andre, Marie, and Pierre. Um, so 746 watts equals one horsepower. And the relationship among power, voltage, and current is determined by the power formula. The basic equation for the power formula is P equals I times E, or watts equals amps times volts. So if I multiply the current by the voltage, it will give watts. So power is the product of current Multiplied times the voltage. In a circuit, if voltage or current increases, power increases. All right. In a circuit, if current decreases, the power decreases. So it's some, some characteristics of electricity you need to remember. If you increase the voltage or current, you increase the power. And then vice versa, if, you de if current decreases, the power will decrease. The definition of a watt the unit of measurement for power is the watt. One watt is equal to one ampere times one volt. 
The most common application of a rating in watts is probably and most often the light bulb. So they're rated in watts. Number of watts they consume classes light bulbs, so are resistors. Common examples of additional items with wattage ratings are audio speakers, some motors, and most home appliances. In electrical circuit, resistance is the thing that uses electrical power. Recall, however, that many kinds of devices can have resistance. Devices that offer electrical resistance include conductors, insulators, resistors, coils, and motors. You can multiply the voltage times the current in any circuit and find out how much power is consumed. For example, a typical hair dryer can draw almost 10 amps of current. You know that the voltage in your home is about 120 volts, and this is AC, alternating current. You multiply those two values together and you get 1200 watts. Alright. So now attached to your e-learning today, you have exercise 3-1. Our first question is the movement of electrons in a conductor is called DC voltage, current, AC voltage, or resistance. The movement of electrons and I didn't mention this in our water analogy, but if I have a, if water, if voltage is our pressure, then our flow would be considered our current, water current. Um, same thing with electricity, if electrons are flowing, the movement of electrons in a conductor is called, if you said B current, you are correct. Electromotive force and potential mean the same thing as, so EMF, remember some scientific notation for voltage is, they use a capital E that stands for electromotive force. Um, and it is also a difference in potential. They mean the same thing as if you said C voltage, you would be correct. So electromotive force and potential potential difference is the same thing as voltage, which is electrical pressure. Number three, materials that are easy for electricity to flow through are called conductors, insulators, resistor, or isotopes. Um, remember that insulators are hard for electricity to flow through. Resistors offer resistance that limits current flow. So materials that are easy for electricity, if you say conductors, A, you are correct. Number four, materials that are hard for electricity to flow through are called, it's the opposite of easy. It is hard for us. We have a higher resistance of conductors, insulators, resistor, or isotopes, if you said insulators, you are correct. Electricity flows through a conductor when there is a difference in potential current, both A and B, neither A or B. Um, so electricity flows, we have current flow when we have pressure. So pressure is known as voltage, and that is a potential, A. So if you said A, you are correct. Number six, when current flows in a single direction, it is called DC, AC, FC, OC. So we have two types of current, AC and DC, alternating and direct. If it's in a single direction, it is direct current. So if you said A, you are correct. The kind of current used in most automotive electrical circuits is direct, alternating, fluctuating, oscillating. Um, an alternator in a vehicle does produce an alternating current, but it has to be converted to DC to be used by the battery. So most uh, current used in automotive electrical circuits is, if you said A, you are correct, direct current. Service manual schematics use conventional flow, electron flow, Ohm's law, or electromotive force theory. Uh, remember that the electron flow theory states that it flows from negative to positive. It's been proven to be most correct. Um, but service manual schematics and multimeters, taking electrical measurements, we follow the 
um, current flow from positive to negative, and that is the conventional flow theory. So A would be correct. Basic unit of measurement for power is the ampere, volt, watt, ohm. The ampere um, is used to indicate the measurement for current. The volt is used as a measurement for the potential difference, or EMF. The watt is a measurement of power. So if you said C, you're correct, and then ohms are a measurement of the resistance in a circuit. Alright guys, if you have any questions about this lesson, um, or if you just quite don't understand the property, basic properties of electricity, um, just send me a message, email on, or on Remind, and, um, and I will get back to you. Have a good break, guys.